All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the next tutorial, Data Science by Hadi. So in this series of tutorials, uh, we're going to cover text classification, which is a part of natural language processing. So and in here, in this tutorial, I'm going to use Jupyter Notebook. And I'm assuming that you guys have already installed that. I'm going to use Python 3.5 or 6. Let's uh, we'll check that out. So also I'll let you know what versions of packages I'm using. So once you install Jupyter Notebook, if you already have it, you just need to Jupyter Notebook to launch it. Um, so let me actually bring it to the other screen here. All right, so let's uh, have an overview of what we're gonna cover. Uh, so, um, first of all, before I forget, uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Twitter, DS by Hadi, and Twitter is my handle. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll try my best to be more responsive from now on. And this is our email, data science by Hadi at Gmail. So, in these uh, tutorials, we're going to... Um, discuss one problem in natural language processing and let's talk about NLP itself for a minute. So NLP is dealing with text and text is unstructured data whereas uh, previous in the previous tutorials we were dealing with structured columnar data. Each column was representing one feature but now you don't have a specific feature you have to find those features in, in one body of data. So text, voice, image these are all unstructured data and we call it natural language processing because the data is coming from natural language so our spoken language is nat naturally has developed over time but there are other languages which are not not that natural like the programming languages that we use or some synthetic language like Spronto those are kind of developed artificially so we know each piece well, what it is is it a verb or is it an adjective or like in programming languages we know each word what it is but we know the syntax fully and then the code has to be in that format in general so that's a different story that's not an unstructured data so the questions that we solve in NLP are there are many questions that people try to tackle some of them have already been tackled to a great extent I would say but some are kind of still developing we are still developing solutions for them to name a few problems, name entity recognition, NER, part of speech tagging, machine translation, text summarization, sentiment analysis, and so on. So to clarify, you don't need to be a language expert to dive into these problems, I would say, in general. And many people working on these problems are having like math computer science or engineering background like us so this is just some a word of comfort i would call it so keep watching <laughs> Um, so sentiment analysis. So sentiment, as you know, is uh, is a famous problem. So you have, let's say, a comment on your product on Amazon. You want to know whether this is a negative comment or positive comment or neutral comment or or very negative comment. So depending on your own use case, you you you, you might define different classes. But in general, it's um, an example of text classification problem. And we're gonna, in general, all these things that we are gonna cover in this tutorial is gonna apply to in general text classification. So this is just an example. And as you know, in text classification or in general classification problems, we have different types of classification. Binary classification is a subset of multi class classification and multi-class classification is a subset of multi-label classification so this is just top bottom is, is is generalizing in general so in binary classification you normally have two classes like in, in the case of sentiment analysis a document is either positive or is negative this is an example you could have two different like or, or any email could be spam or not spam multi-class classification you have two or more classes but each document belongs to one at a time so uh, a document could be either positive or neutral or negative this is just one example of problem formulation Another example could be a document is very positive, positive, neutral, negative, very negative. And uh, the generalization of multi-class classification is multi-label classification, whereas your document could belong to more than one class. So let's say you have different classes, whether 
a document has uh, hate speech, insult, profanities, some sort of stuff like this. And then one document could have all of them at the same time. So it belongs to all three classes. So in that case, we call it multi-label classification. So this is another problem formulation in text classification. So there are two mainstream approaches to tackle uh, text classification. One is bag of words and the other one embedding. We're going to get into details. Uh, just bear with me. Uh, I'm going to just uh, give you a high level of what we're going to cover. So we are going to have one smaller example of sentiment analysis and we're going to apply both these techniques to, to that problem. And then later we're going to apply these techniques to a bigger real scale problem. Again, sentiment analysis problem. So the tools that we have uh, right now available are there, there are many tools, I would say in general, and, and these are all Python tools, although they have other formats normally. Uh, so scikit-learn, as you know, the famous scikit-learn package, spacey, some people use it because of some benefits they claim they, they get when they are Productionize their solution. NLTK, Stanford NLP, Spark NLP, Fast Text. This is the Facebook AI project. It has a, a CLI, command line interface, but it has a Python version as well. But probably CLI ones has the, the most updated stuff, but we're going to use the Python version in here. So I'm going to get back to these once I start the, the example. So bag of words, I'm going to explain some details, some, some in-depth stuff about it as much as I can. Sometimes I, I, I intentionally do not go into depth. Embedding, I'm going to tell you what, what what is embedding in general and how it's uh, formulated and calculated. And then I'll also have some tips for you. And then at the end, I'm going to cover some challenges. Let's uh, dive into the first example.